What's up guys, GMTDI back here to destroy another team. This time we're going to take control of my hometown, as you can tell, as you can tell, the Toronto Maple Leafs, alright? So I'm um, going to put the likes of Freddie Anderson, JBR, Austin Matthews, Marner, Nylander on the line, see if they get scooped up by any other teams, and we'll just hope for some big blockbuster trades to happen. I'm going to change up the trade block a little bit which I will show you right not now before we get to that um, I'm going to make one change so owner modes off obviously cap still on more on meetings get off what I want to turn off is waivers because I tested out my new trade block with the Leafs and it was just a shitstorm of waiver moves people getting placed on waivers getting claimed calling up setting down my assistant coach also I need to turn him off because he kept on scratching Marner and Nylander over and over and over. Like every month I had to go back and put them back in the lineup. It was ridiculous. So what we're going to do is we're going to run with these going forward. Okay, so guys, keep an eye on how this works. Um, and waiver's off. And yeah, let me know. Give me feedback. As always, this series is ever-changing. I'm going to tweak the sliders to make it great and hopefully make each episode different because, you know, I've been seeing like Zetterberg and... Franzen and all these Detroit guys being traded every episode. So we want to minimize that and add some diversity to this series. All right, so let's go with these um, settings and then we'll jump into the trade block. So here we are in the trade block with the Leafs. So first we're going to look at the actual three assets that are on the block. So in the last few episodes, uh, whatever the team had as their default players and picks or whatever, that's what we left it at. Instead, what we're going to do is throw the three draft picks from each team that have the most trade value. So in this case, we're going to throw the three first round picks over the next three years for the Leafs. And my logic for doing this is basically I want as much value as possible available without, you know, just giving away players. So I could throw picks in there and also ties into the fact that this is a one year franchise and we want to win the cup this year. So, I mean, trading away a first round pick isn't that crazy. I mean, trading three first picks is pretty crazy, but you know, this entire series is nuts. So now we're gonna move on to the surplus, and this is obviously gonna stay the same. We're gonna throw literally everything that exists in our organization on the trade block or the surplus and make everything available. But what we want back is something that I'm gonna make a slight change to. Now, I'm an idiot for not thinking of this earlier, so you can actually toggle the overall of a player that you want. So you go in here where it says, you know, you can select three ratings. You just, the first stat that comes up is overall. So rating min, I'm going to set this, because this is my personal preference, at 78. I think at 78, there's still NHL caliber. Anything lower than that, they're pretty garbage. And you know, with morale and everything in this, uh, in this game mode, overalls can go up or down. So I think 78 is a good starting point. Um, for players that we want back in return on our team. The rest of this stuff I'm not gonna touch. I'm still gonna keep it open. Uh, salary doesn't matter, potential accuracy doesn't matter, min range, I mean, I could toggle this, but in the end I don't really care too much because the overall is like the main piece. I don't really care if they're going to be something good or bad. I care about what they are right now because it's a one year franchise mode. And of course when I specified by age, that restricted some of the big name players like McDavid or Eichel or guys like that when I had it up at 22, 23 years old and same on the upper end I mean I couldn't get guys like Yager uh, Guys like that I couldn't get in return So now there's a full range of players 78 overall that we could potentially get offered in this episode All right, so that's what the trade block is gonna look like going forward until I get you know further feedback or I look over and realize that I'm being stupid in some area but I don't think I am I think it all looks good um, we should have some interesting trades drop a like on the video if you agree and are excited for this episode without further ado let's jump in all right guys so looking at the rosters we've got Nylander Matthews and Komarov now Zach Hyman's in the minors because he's only like 78 79 overall I don't really feel like bringing him up for the sake of having the like you know real life lineups because uh, Komarov's 84, he's much better than Hyman in this game. So we're going to keep Komarov on the top line, which could be controversial, because JVR is down there, he's a power forward. He's got better scoring stats, shooting stats. Um, okay, yeah, I'm just going just gonna to back up and put JVR there. Okay, so we got Nylanders, Matthew, JVR, Komarov, Bozak, Marner, Lupul, Kadri, Like, Martin, Smith, and Fair. So our center depth is solid. 
Um, you know, but our overall range is not that great. I mean, our best player is 86 overall, which I'm hoping will increase over the course of the year as Matthews and Nylander, Marner, JVR continue to rack points over the course of the year. And then turning to the defense, we got Morgan Riley with Zaitsev, Gardner with Marchenko, and Hunwick with Polak. Um, I've got each of them on their correct spot because I am a mini Mike Babcock and prefer it that way. And then we got Freddie Anderson in net with McElhaney, yeesh, 74 overall, backing him up. So the team's looking pretty average and the stats, you know, indicate that 89-89 across the board. So let's jump into the sim, let's sim through the preseason and see if we get any trades before the regular season. Oh man, we are ready for the season it looks like. 4-0 and to start. Uh, okay, almost. Almost went perfect. Alright, so this time no trades in preseason. So we got to keep an eye on the number of trades that we get in this episode. Because I want it to be enough, but I don't want it to be a lot. And I think we'll definitely have less than the Arizona episode. Um, hopefully a decent amount in this one. So as always, let's jump through the first two months and let the trades roll in. Okay, first trade. And, interesting, <laughs> this actually makes our team more realistic because Dominic Moore is joining the Leafs where he actually is on the team right now, so accepting our first trade of the season. Oh my god, no freaking way. Ugh, teams love Kadri in this game. And Florida wants him apparently, so we're giving up Kadri an elite center, well, this, so this game says, he's like 85 overall right now, only getting better, and Yager and Luongo only getting worse as age goes on, all right? But it's only for one year. Yager still, well, both of them are still decent overalls. Uh, Luongo and Anderson's a pretty damn good tandem, if you ask me, but we lose Frederick Gauthier, he's an up and coming forward. He's not on the roster right now, though, and we lose Matt Martin as well. So, two roster players gone, Two roster players added, backup goalie, of course, but um, yeah, so we're going to accept this one, then we're going to have to rejig our lines a little bit. I'll give you guys a quick look at some of the lineups after some big trades happen, because I know you guys are kind of in the dark, players are coming in, you don't know where they're slotting in, and then you see their points at the end of the season, right? So um, I put Yager up on the first line with the two kids, old and new collide, hopefully they can learn something, um, and yeah, we don't pay freaking... Uh, five, six million a year that we are for Marlow right now. Marner, Bozak, and JVR, that line's still intact. Lupul Komarov at center, because he's got like 70 face-offs, which is decent. I'm actually going to see if anybody else is better. Ooh, Brooks like 80 face-offs. There you go. You just got a center roll. And uh, Fairmore and Hyman, all right? No changes to our defense, and our goalies, we just upgraded from a 74 backup to an 88 backup. So we're solid in net. Obviously, I'm sure teams are going to trade for Freddie Anderson, but... I mean, that means we still get Luongo, and he can carry us to the cup, um, hopefully. All right, the team that we just traded with, Florida, can we beat them? Yes, we do, 4-2. Start off the year, the Leafs are on a roll. 5-2-0, that's decent. 5-2-2, two two, okay, two uh, OT losses in a row, but uh, yeah, we're going strong. Hmm, ooh, 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 okay, interesting. We get Daniel Sedin for Brooks-like, so on a player basis, that's a huge upgrade. Um, you know, we take a more cap, but whatever. Trading with Vancouver, the team we just traded. Why is it that the teams always trade with us right before we're going to play them? It's like a measuring stick. So we just lost to uh, Vancouver there after that trade, which is interesting. 3-2. All right, so two months down, and we are 11-8-4, which is not bad. The Marlies are also doing very well. So let's go and check out some of the, uh, the lines here. I don't think we need to change too much. Um, so let's check out the lines here, and after two months, Nylander, Matthews, Yager, I've got him on the first line. Marner, Sedin, because he's got s still decent face-offs, even though he's a left winger with JVR. Komarov, Bozak, Lupul, Fair, Moore, and Hyman, that line hasn't changed. Our defense has not been touched yet, and I'm very thankful for that. Morgan Riley's already up to an 86, and our goalies, as you've said, Luongo's starting this game, but uh, yeah, they were just rotating back and forth, 88-88. In terms of the actual standings, <laughs> This is actually ridiculous. So our division is crazy good this year, it looks like. All six teams are within three points of each other. 
and five of us are in a playoff spot right now. So, I mean, we're in last, but this division is wide open and we're killing it. We're killing this, uh, this league right now. So Florida's in first, but we're not far behind. Also on paper, this team's gotten better. We went from 89s across the board to 91, 89, 90. So that bodes well for the second two months of the season. Let's get through them now. Okay. All right. I think these trades are actually very, very solid like roster players coming in all the roster players going out but it looks like the last two trades anyways older higher overall players for I th potentially younger i mean fair still fairly old um lower overall players and picks to compensate for the disparity in trade value so i'll take verbata i mean he's not he's a scorer he's a top nine forward just like fair is he'll probably slot somewhere in there so we'll accept that uh, another trade coming in and uh, yeah following the same theme we get rid of Polak but we get Seidenberg back who I think is better overall. Seidenberg is like uh, 84, 85 in this game with Chimera as well so a depth forward. Uh, get rid of two picks but you know we're, we're not really going to miss those in this series so we'll accept this one as well. Uh, okay another trade Matt Hendricks for Matt Hunwick to you know not really notable names, roster players though. We're getting a lot of depth forwards and our defense is starting to get picked off, which I don't like. Uh, we've yet to go on a significant win streak this year, which I don't like. It's like three wins and then three losses, a win, loss, loss, like inconsistent play, which I don't like to see throughout the season, although overall we still have a good record. I'd like to see more consistency going forward. Just I say that we're on a three game win streak. Continue four games. There we go. Here we go. Five games. There we go. This is what we need to pull ahead in the standing. Oh, okay, see those. Okay, and this is probably the biggest trade of the episode, or you could say the Kadri, um, the one with Florida. So Zetterberg is coming once again. The Red Wings just don't want to keep him five years at six mil. I don't know why they wouldn't want to do that. Um, and then we're losing Jake Gardner, one of our top two or three defensemen on the team right now. Uh, Valiev and Herzog are going. We don't care about those non-roster players. So it's basically Zetterberg for Gardner. And uh, it's, a, it's an upgrade right now, but our forward's getting pretty loaded up top and our D's getting picked off, like I said before. All right, so just before the trade deadline, um, looking at our record, we're 30, 21, and 10. So we're solid, and so are the Marlies, 31, 20, and 5. So let's look at the standings here, and there we go. We we maintained our form. Um, Ottawa, I mean, pulled a little bit ahead. They widened the gap between them, but we are now in second in our division, so we're in a playoff spot, and uh, we're looking good. On paper, we increased even more, 93, 90, 90 now. All right, guys, so here's our lines for the rest of the season, basically. Unless we go to trade late uh, before the trade deadline, which is tomorrow, which I don't think is gonna happen. So we got Nylander and Zetterberg with the Swedish connection with Jager. Then we got JBR, Matthews, and Marner. Uh, no, Nylander and Marner both went up to 85. Matthews went up one to 87. Uh, Verbata Sedin is on third line center because honestly I don't know where else to play him. I don't want to... If we start sucking in the last half of the season, I might move Sedin up to one of the top two lines and, and move one of the, the kids down, but we'll leave for now because I want them to grow as much as they can this year. And then more Bozak on the fourth line. I mean, again, our center depth is crazy. 89 top, 85 bottom. That's legit. Our defense is looking all right about the same as it was at the start of the year i mean new players but same overalls or similar overalls riley's up to a 90 now he jumped a lot with uh, zaitsev still here seidenberg kind of replaces gardner marchenko still here carrick and marinson replace hunwick and polak so not the end of the world and then same old story with our goalie since we got that trade luongo and anderson are sharing their duties both at 88 overall still. So I mean, all I want to accomplish at this point is just make the playoffs and then anything can happen. So let's jump into the sim and sim these last 21 games of the season and see where we finish. All right, a stretch of Eastern Conference games right here. Let's get some wins. There you go, against Detroit. Take Philly as well, 8-3, boom, there we go. Carolina's legit this year. And we crush them, 5-1, all right. Can we get to 45 wins? I, th ugh. It'll be tough. We need to win five of the last six. There you go. That's a start. Okay, Buffalo, big game here. It's a big one. If it ever gets to that day, come on, EA. Buffalo, yes, we won. Here we go. We could get to 45. Two wins in the next three. We can do it. 
Oh my god. Piss... Ugh, the, one of the best teams in the league. Actually, we have one point more than them. For the Presidents, race for the Presidents, we lose the last three games of the season. That's never good. And... Look who we have here, Tampa Bay. We just lost to them like three games ago, 5-3. So we made the playoffs clearly. So did the Marlies. They absolutely killed it. And now that the season's over, we can look at some of the stats. So individually, player-wise, um, who did well for us? We didn't really, again, the sim is tough to get points per game um, in a season. But like our, we had contribution across the board. We had five players with 60 plus points that's unreal Matthews had 51 assists leading the team Zetterberg came in clutch 65 points that's huge Yager he's 45 years old but still contributing points 62 in fact um, I mean Riley smashed it 51 points uh, 90 overall well deserved goalie stats here we go goals against average of 2.4 that's not good we led in a lot of goals this year looks like um, but I mean clearly we outscored them yeah, and it was just spread throughout our team I mean our goalies played equally well in terms of going into the playoffs we got to start Freddie Anderson he's got the better stats he had the better record all year so we're gonna run with him another thing I should be doing is showing you guys the overall oh my god player stats Vladimir Tarasenko destroys this league oh my god where's Crosby he's not even in the top whatever this is 15 what is happening with this sim this season what Tarasenko with 150.71 goals when has that last happened a player broke 70 goals in a season that's ridiculous and of course Stastny and Steen who are on his line inevitably 97 and 93 points just feeding the kid all season long um, yeah they're also 90 plus points Sagan um, yeah, Perry got 50 goals, Kaner almost got 50, so it looks like the, uh, the Blues, the Ducks did well, um, Washington looks like they did well, and the Stars. Where's Crosby? Oh, there you go, settle the Taves and Crosby argument. Um, you can't, they're equal according to this game, in terms of points anyways. Taves 74 points tied with Crosby below guys like Kyle Turris. Tavo Teravainen, 84 overall, got more points than 96 overall Sidney Crosby. So, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. And now we can look at the uh, actual team stats. So, Ottawa crushed it. Did they get the presence? Oh, no, they clinched the conference. Okay, 103 points. Yeah, they did very well. We came in second with 98. We almost got 100. That's nuts. Facing Tampa Bay, who got 88. So, we are 10 points above the team we're playing. And then across the entire league, we finished seventh. So uh, that's, is that better than Anaheim did? That might have been. Um, so the Leafs might actually have been the best player that we've chosen to date. Stars got the presidents. Where is St. Louis? How is that possible? They finished 11th in the league. And I mean, they got the most goals for in the league. Uh, so that makes sense. Who finished last? That should be more interesting. Colorado, fair enough. Arizona, fair enough. Islanders suck. Edmonton, for some reason, it's terrible in this game. I mean, I guess McDavid can't carry them like he does in real life. Boston didn't make it, so Chicago didn't make it. Wow. Interesting. They're above 500, but still had a lackluster season. Okay. And then, of course, we can show you guys the playoff matchups. So the West is looking pretty fair, except for you see Vancouver made the playoffs somehow without Daniel and I don't know who the hell they traded for. So, uh, okay, interesting. And then the East... Any surprises? Carolina, big, pretty big surprise there for making it. Um, Philly, no, they're decent. So, I mean, the East looks pretty solid. Okay, guys, here we go. Jumping back into the sim here, and we are going to go through the first three games of the playoff. Um, we're just going to go game by game like this until we get to, like, an elimination game, and then we're going to jump into the game and see if we can cheer on our team. So, okay, we take a big loss in the first game. We pulled the OT win in the second game. There we go. So, I mean, 1-1 one, one going to Tampa is not ideal, and we pull out the third win. Okay, I don't care about all these notifications. After three games, we're up 2-1. We're in Tampa. Let's go up 3-1 and then go home, close the series, boys. Come on. Ugh, they tied it up with a big answer. Okay. Oh, my God. Looks like this series is going the distance. Uh, some another one here. Come on, Leafs. You can get past the first round. Yes, there you go. OT win. Let's go. One more. That's all we need, baby. Freddie Anderson, come on, take him, yes! There we go, the Leafs! 
And the Leafs make it to the second round against New York Rangers now, who also had a six game first round series. Let's go on in here and go through the next three games. So another, start with our five, uh, OT, two OT games back to back, and then we, uh, we answer with uh, the 5-3 win. So we are again, 2-1 up. Let's not have this series tied again. Okay, we got to move on and improve, and we want to get through this playoffs quickly so we can have some rest. So come on, go three one. Get out of here, scout. You're so annoying. Pull out the win, damn it. Okay, all right, tied two two. Come on, we can do it now. Yes, okay, three two. We're on the verge of the conference finals, guys. Here we go. Please take it home. Yes. We made it to the conference finals against none other than Sid and the Penguins. Okay, so another six game series. Um, yeah, we're eight and four now. The Penguins are eight and one through the playoffs. They had a sweep and then a five game. So they've only lost one game in, uh, in this entire playoff. So they're coming off on a hot streak, that's for sure. So let's see what we can do in the first three games here. Okay, okay win and then a loss and then a loss okay so <laughs> first three games uh we win the first one 6-2 and then we get shut out and then we get and um, you know answered back by the penguins so okay let's go one more should i change up the lines now i don't think we should there's no time to panic just yet until it's 3-1 okay it's 3-1 <laughs> come on the leaves from the stanley cup finals an ot loss i can't believe it all right so we got to go back here so player stats here we go um, who is performing and who is not? Uh, I mean, our top two lines, they're all doing well. Yager, Marner, JVR, Boz Bozak, what the? He's on the fourth line. He's got third most points on the team. Who's not performing? Zetterberg, was he? First line center? Man, okay, we might have to move Matthews up and Zetterberg down. And where's Sedin? Sedin, I'll drop him to the fourth, no problem. And I'll bring on Bozak. Let's look how our goalies are doing. Um, Freddie Anderson's played every game, except for two. What? It doesn't really make. Have we played 19 games? 18 games? No, we haven't. Okay, these stats really don't make sense. 9-11 save percentage with two eight. Uh, his goals against are going up in the playoffs, and all his stats are going down. But I mean, there's nothing really we can do. Luongo's not any better, so we just gotta hope and pray that Freddie gets better. Um, one thing I want to do is change up our centers a little bit because it seems like some players are stepping up and some are not. Matthews is the one that's stepping up. Um, same with Bozak and Sedin is not. Maybe he's more comfortable on the wing, so we'll move Komarov down and we'll put Sedin here on the left. And I think that's all we're going to do. Jumping back into the sim, the Leafs are on the verge of elimination against the high powered offense Pittsburgh Penguins, who I've only lost two games these entire playoffs, so come on. Let's watch these boys get her done. All right, nothing yet. Shots are tied. It's a very uneventful playoff game. Who's going to get the first goal? We are. Zetterberg, there you go. After moving down to the second line, he contributes. Okay, there we go. Nylander, the two Swedes. They're killing it right now. We're, out, we're double out shooting them. Okay, keep this up. I like how this is going. 5 and 4 power play. Ah, okay, don't let him back in it. Keep the pressure on. There, oh, no. I just said keep the pressure on. We need a power play goal. Our power play's not clicking. Doesn't look like it. Come on, don't let them tie it up. Look how look how we're out shooting them. They're slowly creeping back into this game. The veterans, okay. Last period, here we go. We need to push it to game seven now, guys. Everything you have. Save a little bit left for game seven. Oh my God, Connor Sheary again. Who is this kid? Cross the sim by accident. Okay, shots 30 to 21, come on guys. Five on three, why did, what? We just took a five on three, answer back, please, on the power play is garbage. Oh my God, we actually just gave up a two goal lead in an elimination game. Oh my God, and then presumably an empty netter and we're out of the playoffs. Oscar Sundquist buries us. A uh, familiar script if you're a Leafs fan. 2 nothing up early in the first. One of the highest scoring teams in the first period this year. And inevitably they collapse. Connor Sheary gets one in the second, one in the third. We go on a 5-on-3 penalty kill in the third for some reason. And of course Malkin gets the game winner. So that's all she wrote for the Leaf season. And they do, you know what, uh, still surprisingly well. They make it to the conference finals and lose in six games 
sorry, in five games, let's sim through the rest of the playoffs here and see who's going to hoist the cup. Are the Pittsburgh Penguins going to um, mimic history and win this year's cup as well? Who are they going to play? The Ducks or the Blues? Maybe the Blues will win their first franchise Stanley Cup. Let's see here. Did I sim enough to go through the whole playoffs? June 7th? Yes, we did. Okay. Well, there you go. We eventually lost to the inevitable Stanley Cup champions. So I'll take that as a consolation. And Rockford wins the Calder Cup. So congrats to them as well. And uh, yeah, that about wraps up the Leaf season. Um, surprising. And, you know, that was that was fun. I mean, we got some good trades. All Every single trade was interesting, except for the more Smith swap to start it off. But, I mean, we got upgrades, older players, but upgrades to the team nonetheless. If you guys want to see anything change with the trade box sliders um, or how I run each episode in general, leave me some feedback in the comments below. Drop a like on the video if you're enjoying these All Trades Accepted uh, videos. So, again, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and want to see more of these on a regular basis. And until next one, I'll see you guys then.